the salt, the juice, the amount of salt. Okay, so finally, you can see something very clearly. Okay, very clearly. In one glass, perhaps here, you will see that the ink is falling down. Okay? In the other, you can see that the ink is on the top or on the surface. So here, well, the ink is on the top, this is 100%, so the water or sea water if you want. Quite. What do you feel when you put your finger inside? As you can see, small but, but quite sharp. But he doesn't need his tongue as much as we do. Why not? What doesn't he do? And so, uh, what is the special thing about the uh, teeth from a shark? So it's called a revolving jaw. When we uh, look at the teeth, they are pointed inward, okay, so that the prey doesn't escape. So they don't have like us, molars and instead. This flipper, the tail flipper, you can see with all the sharks it's a characteristic. You can see that the upper part is longer because the spine finishes up. So these three flippers here, why, why are they here? What's their purpose? Hmm? To keep it upright, so for stability. Without these flippers the shark would swim in this way. And these two flippers, of course, for what are they for? Control his direction. Because these flippers are very hard, they can only swim forward, not backwards. Uh, the color of the shark, and uh, by the color, uh, you can uh, you can see where the shark lives. Where does it live? Does it swim in the open sea? Yeah, it remains on the bottom, and, pr and he prefers sandy bottom. And, uh, but the, the bottom side of the shark is white. Why is it white? Yeah, so it's also a camouflage because when he swims and the fish looks from, all, from under, she can't really see him because the sun is shining. It's the case with a lot of other fish, not just the shark. Feel the skin on the back of the shark. So, you can feel it in both directions. <laughs> Don't worry, if he won't bite you. <laughs> you can still create the touch thing. So, if you go in this direction, it's very, very smooth, smooth, right? But in the other direction, it's quite coarse. Okay. So, why is his skin so coarse? It is a type of scale, but we call them teeth. So, the, the shark has a great number of microscopic teeth on his skin. Those are called placoid scales, and they are pointed in this direction. Why? So he has lesser water resistance, and of course, it's very good against the parasites who would want to attack. So you can see, it's a, uh, it's a dogfish, a night nice animal, so we would expect the eyes to be big. Normally, they, they are very, very big, and why do they, also one reason why they call them cat sharks, it resembles a little bit to the eye of a cat. Where is the smell sensor? These two big ones, yes. But with the shark, they only function as smell receptors. And what does the shark have on both sides of his body? Like we see here, this long line. The sensory organ is called the lateral line. It's a series of small holes, and in every hole you have a little cell, a nervous cell. And this cell moves when the water comes in. So what, what does that mean? With this lateral line, the shark can feel the movement of the water. But the shark has something that the other fish don't have, bony fish. And you can see this when you flip him over to his back. Okay, and have a look by the nose. Uh, have a better look. You will see a lot of small holes. So here, you can see. It's like somebody punctured them with a needle. A lot of very small holes. And they shape some form of a U letter. Okay? What can that be? Uh, that is actually an electrical sensory organ, electrical receptors. Uh, what does that mean in plain English? So the, the shark can feel the electrical field of other animals. Because in these holes are special uh, receptacle cells. 
Okay, and the, the structure is called the Lorenzini's ampules. Okay, so it's a small cell and it's capable of uh, feeling very minute electrical charge. So, why does that come in handy? Because his prey are, uh, are uh, squid and things like that, so mollusks, and also he eats crabs. So, when a crab is in the water, uh, excuse me, in the sand, he can actually feel him under the sand and dig him out. So, what's the difference between these animals? You can see the copulatory organs. Okay, uh, this is one characteristic specific only for the sharks, for the cartilaginous fish. So, the male will impregnate, impregnate the female inside her body. There's no uterus inside, of course, but uh, the, what will happen then, the female will lay eggs. So this is, uh, this is a common case with these small sharks that live in shallow water. They lay eggs. And what happens to the egg? The egg is in a protective little mantle. Okay, it has like a little, uh, like a little bag. And it stays in the water for a long time, seven, eight months. Okay, and in that time you can see the small dogfish developing in the shark. So, taking in oxygen, where does it go in? Through the mouth. And outside, through the gills. How many gill flaps do you see, gill openings? 90% of sharks have five gill openings. But what happens with the shark when he's laying on the bottom and so his mouth is full of sand? How does he breathe then? So, he has actually one special adaptation. You can see this by the eyes. So. Uh, this small hole behind the eyes, it is a place where water goes inside during his feeding or resting. Okay, so the water goes in here and outside again on the gill. Okay, so this shark can breathe even when, when, uh, when resting. So, I think that we have talked enough and we can now have sharks which live here, which are bigger, but we don't dissect them, we don't find so many of them, and when it's a big shark, then it smells worse than the small ones. So, uh, you, you have to make two incisions. So, the first one goes here, behind the eye. So, you cut, and you can cut deep. Don't worry, you won't hurt the shark. But then, I mean, you won't hurt the brain. But then, the second part, which is, please observe the second part. The second part goes from the first incision and goes in the middle of the head. This is harder than I... <laughs> I wonder. Ah, because there's this hard part there, I can feel it. I've got an I got one I think surgeons are better at this. Yeah. So tough, isn't it? Yeah. I'm sure human skin isn't that difficult to get through. That's all right. Oh, there it is. <laughs> what happened? All the things gone. Hey, doctor, you're going to kill me. What is that dented? She's all right, it's on the phone. <laughs> oh, no. So it's possible to push too hard. Okay. You're never going to get through with that. <laughs> Just try, try with the end of that and that might work. Okay, so there's a little bit of scalpel left. Okay.
Okay, I finally got something cut. Okay, and then the other way. Now it depends whether this is the brain that I'm cutting in or if it's still. Oh, wait, maybe that's it. Oh, I'm not going to say Yeah. This is even up. Yeah. 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 I have no idea where the brain is. <laughs> Doesn't really have a lot of one to say. Do you want to keep going? Sure. <laughs> At least until we confirm that there is a brain somewhere. See, we can find the brain by the brain in two parts, more than you know. Okay, so it was cut through. I think I must have cut through it because there is bone. Uh, it's quite close to the surface, yeah. Together, something like this. Okay, so from here all the way to here. Quite a lot of brain. But let's see if we maybe find the better one. It's literally where your, where your scalpel is. I think we've done it. Did I cut it? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no problem. Don't have dispensable. Uh, let's, let me see. So the brain, you know, it's cut. So we, we won't be able to see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's not a problem. No, I meant for Mike. No, that's all right. What else is there? I would have done that as well. <laughs>